Many crumpets. Way. <laughs> Shouldn't be too many crumpets, he says. Hey folks, welcome back to the cabin project. Today we are going to be looking at getting the next layer of insulation on, getting ready for ceilings. We've got plasterboard arrived now. First up, quick explainer on what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it. Right, in a previous video, we fit all of our insulation between our roof timbers. They're in, they're snug. We used uh, expanding foam tape which just helps friction fit them and make sure there's no kind of gaps. We haven't had to use any squirty foam anywhere. It's just all nice and snug. But we've still got those timbers and they go straight through to our outside. And as many of you will know, those timbers create a thermal bridge, a cold spot in our ceiling. And where that cold spot is, we're both losing more heat from the building, but also it can create a cold spot. Every one of those will be colder. If you were to look on a thermal imaging camera, they would be colder and it's a place where condensation could form. So the way we're gonna combat that is to install more insulation underneath all of it. Now this design of roof is called a cold roof. So if you're looking into a project for yourself, whether it's an extension or a garage conversion or something like that, there's, there's two different types. Well, there's also a hybrid roof, but we won't go down that messy hole. A, a cold roof, which is what this is, um, means that your timbers are essentially cold because they are the structure of the roof goes all the way up to the top and you've got an airflow above and your insulation usually is just between or under or like in a, a, lo a traditional loft space where you've got your insulation lower down and you've got that cold roof space the other option is what we did where did we do it on the workshop at the last house where we've installed all of our insulation on the outside a little bit like what we've done here on our walls. We've put all the insulation on the outside. So if you were doing that on a roof, you would have your ceiling timbers, sorry, your rafters. On top of that, you would put an OSB deck or some stocking board. And then on top of that, you could put your full insulation layer, which means you've got this lovely kind of warm tea cozy over the top of everything. All your timbers are on the warm side. And that means that you don't have to necessarily insulate between them all. So you can drill where you want, you can put pipe work and ducting and all sorts through all those timbers. It does mean you've got a slightly taller roof and if you can't mess around with roof heights because of limitations then you might have to avoid that. So you now know what we're doing and there are two options here. You could buy insulated plasterboard where you've got your insulation with the plasterboard bonded to it, get a plasterboard lift, wind it up against the ceiling, put your screws in and you're done. What we're going to do is slightly different. Uh, you could do what I've done in the past, which is just get these in place and then screw regular plasterboard through, just saves a little bit of money. But also we are gonna be insulating and then putting battens underneath so we can run our lighting cables up and any other cables, speakers, whatever we want to in that void. And then we can put any finish we want. And in our case, we're gonna be using a lightweight paneling. Enough of the waffle, let's crack on. I know I said in the last video, we don't need expanding foam anywhere in this building. But we do. Um, well, we don't really need it, but what I'm gonna do, rather, because it's only 25 mil, rather than cut an angle and try and get it to seat against this timber here, and where I've tried to pull these down as tight as I can, I've carried these ones over to the center point anyway, but I'm gonna put a, a little bead of expanding foam here. That'll just mean that there's no gap at all there. What I'm gonna use is the same washers we've been using for the outside insulation. These ones here. In, in the past, I've always used the little penny washers or the insulation washers you use for tile backer, but actually these are just as good and these will be fine for up on this. Now, unlike if we were using insulated plasterboard, we definitely have to finish a board on a timber. Here, it doesn't really matter because even if the board, the insulation finishes in the middle, it's not actually a bad thing because it means that our joins don't go through to a timber. But I'm marking up on here where these are which means when I come in with our battens underneath, I know exactly where to screw through. So that's all good. I'm gonna get those ones up because they're nice and light. I should be able to lift them up, tuck them in tight against here, against our little bead of foam. Fixing, fixing. And there shouldn't be too many crumpets. Whoa! <laughs> shouldn't be too many crumpets, he says.
That is precision foaming if ever I saw it. do you buy insulation boards well normally you just get whatever flavor they have in stock but if uh, a few of them have lines on them but lots of them don't they just have their logo but the lines are actually super helpful that's the message to say my cladding is uh, on its way this weekend Rightly or wrongly, Joe found another bargain on Facebook and it wasn't more pig arcs, it was a load of oak feather edge, which I was avoiding because, <laughs> because it's uh, not the lightest option for our cladding. However, it was 60p a metre. It does need a lot of sanding though because it's been left out in the damp, but we'll see. Might work out. Right, a couple of things to point out, apart from one of the boards is dusty, so it looks inconsistent. Uh, what I've done is staggered the joins. So I've gone that way. Then I've started at the stud wall and come back. That just means that none of our gaps are all the way through. And we've also made sure that our gaps in this layer of insulation are not sitting on top of any other gaps. That just means that both air getting through um, or moisture or anything or heat, everything is just felt some braces really. Um, remember, we're going to be taping all of these joins with a silver foil tape anyway, just a normal plate, flat tape. And that will give us a continuous vapour barrier for this roof. But again, not as vital with our roof system because we've got absolutely oodles and oodles of ventilation above. So it's not like you're trapping moisture in a wall. Uh, you know what this means. 25 mil insulation means deep pan pizza cutter time. I think it might go in three and one, we'll try it out. Okay, so let's have a look here. I've now put all of our insulation blocks in yesterday from the outside, the little off cuts. So push them in from the soffit. So that means with, with some of the gapo tape on. So we do insulate down and beyond. And I can't feel any draft coming through, so that's a good sign. But just to make sure, I'm gonna put a little bead along there. We're gonna insulate all the way down to the OSB. Make sure that's consistent. Yeah, 48. Forty-eight. Forty-eight. To be honest, you could probably do this with a Stanley knife when it's only this thick. No dust, no dust, that's what we want. Oh, that's all right. So this one will start that and we'll do all the little fillers afterwards. <laughs> Some of our boards were a little bit tight. So they might need a little bit of persuasion. That's it. It's not the end of the world, actually, if these went up a tiny bit above the uh, timbers. When I've been doing absolutely loads of this, I just spent five minutes making up a load of these washers. Washer and a screw, and then if you get a scrap of insulation, you can just jab them all in ready. Just saves you, like, fumbling around for them. The other option is those nails that we use on the outside. If I had more, I'd try them now. They have, um, I can't remember, that. I always forget the name, spring hen nails, something like that. They've just got like a little flat washer. I don't see why you couldn't use those. In this situation, we're just tacking it in place. It, it would hold fine. Right, 
I'm onto the entrance hall now. Hall. Can we call it a hall? Can you really have a hall in a caravan? Right. A few little bits of detail to sort there. This, unfortunately, is just over 1.2. <clears throat> One thing to mention, actually, is where, where you've got an internal wall and you're doing this sort of thing, you're basically interrupting where your battens are because, or, or your timbers are. So here, we've just set it to one side that way that when I put my ceiling up, I've got one to catch there. But of course, on the other side, I haven't. So I, in this situation, I can put a batten on the side and fix in. However, on the other ones, I've had to put an extra batten beside it or even use two, uh, a 100 mil wide board and then put my stud in the inside. That means I've got somewhere to catch plasterboard or ceiling panels onto. So here, for example, I've got nothing because this is just friction fitting up against our truss. Because these are 25 mil boards going on, I'll put the 25 mil board up and then we can obviously put our batten up. And when we get to this side, I'll just screw through the sideways uh, of a batten because they're 25 mil thick anyway. I can get that into the truss and that still gives me the ability to put my ceiling in. And another thing to actually point out is we need to insulate over the side. This truss is an exposed wall it's becoming. So we've insulated inside that with mineral wool up to a certain point, but I really want to get 25 mil, even 50 mil of insulation on that vertical surface as well. Now, some of you may watch this and think I'm probably being a bit over the top and being a little bit petty with all of these details, bearing in mind that we are just in a glorified caravan, which is nothing more than that, and it's just a short-term residence for us. However, these are the training grounds for when we do the real thing. And I always say to people the same, same thing if you're doing a garden office or a garage conversion or even a little workshop in the garden, if you get it right there, then you're far more likely to be focused on when you're actually doing it in somewhere that matters. And in the future, if we are trying to get to a really high performance, you know, threshold or passive house and all those sort of criteria, then you do need to pay attention to every single one of these details. And of course, insulation thicknesses will be five, six times thicker and, um, you know, the airtight will be, air tightness will be so much more important. And it might all seem a little bit petty and fussy to be worrying about it, but believe me, it does make a difference. And when you see, maybe we can try and get a thermal imaging camera when we're finished here. And you'll see what I mean when you get this even consistent thermal layer above you, it's going to heat up far quicker and also hold in that heat. And also keep, the, keep it cool in the summer, which is going to be just as important. Anyway, that is it for this video. It is a, a short and sweet as far as the topic goes but it is worth mentioning that you know look into all these bits because they're part and parcel of all the design and it's all well and good having a big strong sturdy structure but you've got to insulate it well if you've got any questions stick them down in the comments section below i'm going to leave it there believe it or not we will finally get around to that roofing video next I just need to get a few more sheets on and then we'll call it done. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.